Okay, gamers, here we go. Uh, quick and dirty email, just or uh, recording just about our graph examples on how to graph things. So, now remember, when we're making graphs, we have two ways to organize things. We can either organize things in a vertical fashion or we can organize things in a horizontal fashion. With a quick look, uh, I don't like the way this looks. It's hard for me to read. It's a lot of info and it's a lot of scrolling, no good. If I set it up vertically like this, I can see more info and I also I read it a little bit more naturally. It's more pleasing to the eye, we'll say aesthetically pleasing, and it's easier to follow. So for us, when we do our data, even though the computer, it doesn't matter so much if you go horizontally or vertically, but for us as humans, vertically is better than horizontally. For this one here, our graphing, usually when for, for usually with graphing grade six science, you're going to use one of two different tables. The first graph you might want to use is a bar graph, and a bar graph is specifically used for comparing, when you're comparing one thing to another to another thing. The other type you may want to use is called a line graph, and that's for change over time. Have you seen the change of a single thing over time? So maybe this is going to be the height of the foam over the half hour in which you observe it, and how does it grow over time? That's just one example. For bar graph example, we're going to start with just our data over here. So I've prepared some data. I'm going to just, oops, I'm going to bring this over. So for a bar graph, with a bar graph, usually, again, it's just for comparing. And in this case, I'm going to be carrying, comparing the solids in this example. So I'm going to change my sugar, which is my control. I'm going to change it for baking soda, cornstarch, honey, salt, and brown sugar. Now remember, I haven't done all these myself. I went to the baking soda person and I saw or got info from them. I went to the cornstarch person, I got their results. I went to the honey person, I got their results. We collaborated together. You'll also see here, once I have everything sorted out, all my independents sorted out here on the left column, that's my input, my x x-axis, I go over to my y, which is my output, and it's the height of the foam. Notice how height of foam is in bracket centimeters, and then afterwards I just have my raw values. I don't have any, uh, any units inside here because the computer isn't interested in those units, they're only interested in the values. Once it's here, I'm going to select all of my data. Once I select all, I'm going to come up here to the top right, insert chart. You, of course, can do it through here, but it's a little bit more easy if you just do insert chart on the top right here. Once you select in, just insert chart, the computer is going to be like, hey, I think you want a line graph, but you're smarter than the computer. You're like, uh, 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 uh. I don't want a line graph because that's for change over time. And there's no changing over time. I'm just getting the height of the balloon, height of the foam at a certain point for all these different ones. So I'm comparing these heights, therefore I need a bar graph. So under your setup, you can come over here under line chart. Under line chart, you're going to simply select column chart. A column chart is what Google calls a bar graph. You can see here, I already have my dependent variable, which is the height. Ooh, let's just change that. Height. Height of foam. I'll change that. Can I change that in here? The height of the foam. I have my dependent variable, which is the solids, and then I have all my different dependent variables and then their corresponding heights of foam. Um, you'll notice with the bar graph, it's super easy to see right from the get-go which one uh, had the most, most reaction. Well, the tallest bar right here, honey. Therefore, honey was the most reactive. I wonder why. That's for you to tell me in your uh, CER. If I look over here afterwards, um, moving on to the line graph, if I take my data, remember for the line graph, we had all of this in class, the second class, and we had some issue with all this data. You'll see here time, time in minutes, and I have all my data over here. The big problem with this is I don't have equal intervals. And that doesn't matter so much, but it kind of matters when you have other people collecting data and you'll see two minutes after two minutes, not many people took recordings after two minutes. Not many people took recordings at seven minutes, at 12 minutes. Most of the time you have a set uh, interval. And if you look at here, five, all three, 10, all three, 15, 
uh, 20 not all three, but then uh, 25 not all three either. Okay. Um, what I did over here just to co collapse this, I kind of fudged a little mon a little number for 20 and fudged a little for 25, and I collapsed it into a solid uh, data table over here. Once you have this one, you can see um, for a change over time, if I take the change over time my line graph like this, it's going to give me how Coke rises, the, um, the, the foam rises over time. Okay, cool. Coke versus time, this is the rise of the foam over time. But I don't want the Coke. I want to be able to compare all of this, all the Coke info with the OJ info with a mounted to, to. Maybe you have milk. Maybe you have... I don't know, uh, Sprite or something else. So what you're going to do is this is your time, this is your x-axis, and you have a y1, y2, y3, y4, y5, yada, yada, yada. So if I select all this data and put it inside a line graph, what will happen is now we have a triple line graph. All on the same line, I can see how this red one, which is OJ, it reacts the slowest. The Mountain Dew, which is the yellow, it kind of reacts similarly, but then kind of tapers off. But then the Coke just grows the most over there. And then here, now we have a um, a line graph here, and we are comparing our different ones within this change over time to see which one has the most reaction at the most time. The next thing you might want to do as well is customize your graph. You can see here I have the very end right here, and you usually don't want to terminate your graph right at the end of your data set, you want to kind of extend a little bit longer. So instead you're going to click on customize the top right and you can go down here to horizontal axis. Underneath the horizontal axis you have a minimum value of zero of course and your maximum value is going to be one greater than your biggest interval or your biggest value. So that's going to be 30, press enter and now it gives me that space. I'm going to do the same thing but instead of the horizontal axis I'm going to do the vertical axis. With the vertical axis, I'm going to have a minimum value of zero, of course. That's going to be my origin, zero, zero. And my maximum value is going to be one more than this. Uh, since my max value is 12, and you can see my intervals go up by a factor of two, I'm going to have my max value of 14. And there you have it. You have your graph. You also notice that you have time and minutes here, but you don't have a value on the side here. So in order to put your, your dependent variable here on the side, you're going to uh, go down here and... Label default. Ooh, where'd that go? Where'd that go? Oh, there it is. Charts, axes. So chart title, you're going to change that. You're going to want to come over here to vertical axis. With your vertical axis, you're just going to change it to height of, height of foam. And that height of foam is, of course, in CM as well. Once you add that in there, then that's going to add year, and you're going to have a perfect title or a perfect graph here. You probably want to change this one. You can go up here, chart title. With a chart title, you don't want that. You want to say um, height of foam over time, something like that. And there you have it. Now you have your two different graphs. You have data all set up in a understandable fashion and a graph that makes sense. You also have your data over here for a bar graph in an organizable fashion and a graph that makes sense. And there you have it. Two different graphs you'll probably use in science uh, for grade six as of right now. If you have any questions, hit me back. I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks.